you're just gonna stand next to me because the microphone's right here. Let me know when we're live. Check, check on the sound, check. We are back with you from the Atlanta South Championships here at beautiful Lake Windward Country Club in Alpharetta, Georgia, along with technical director, Carl Schmidt. This is Dave the Badger Weinbach, and we have a special guest from Owensboro, Kentucky, via Mumbai. Altaf Merchant is here joining us. Badger, always a pleasure to be next to you, buddy. We're going to uh, do a little preview of the match that's going to be on this court over here, and it's going to feature Simone Hardin and Kyle Yates. And I don't see their opponent yet, uh, but they're going to be taking on Christine McGrath and Ben Johns in one of the semifinals. And the other semifinal, which just started, is featuring Catherine Parento and Joey Farias taking on the Wichita combination of Lucy Kovalanda, originally from Slovakia, and Matt Wright. Which is shaping up to be a very entertaining match. Oh, and Matt gets a let court. Looked like Catherine was ready for that two-handed roll backhand until it hit the net. So Dave, you had, uh, you had a chance to play against Matt yesterday. How's he hitting the ball? Oh man, he's so solid. Uh, I was saying uh, uh, live earlier today that you know a lot of people talk about hand speed, and I was saying earlier today that Ben Johns and Matt Wright have the best combination of not just hand speed but powerful hands. Would you agree with that out of totally. all the players we have in this game that they have the best combination of speed and power with their hands? Totally. I remember on uh, Friday when we were playing in just red clay games with them. I mean, there's no way to hide with those guys. There is no way to hide. They can, they can dink with you, but once they get into the shootout, they, I mean, they actually push yeah. you back. They can, yeah. Some of their shots can physically push you back. They'll yeah, so you put those two boys together and you got issues, as you know, I like to say. But let's get back to the mixed uh, double day because this has been an incredible day of mixed doubles action. It's mixed doubles pro day and mixed doubles senior pro, which uh, we have a match going on as well uh, right behind us. Uh, Byron, who is playing in the senior uh, match right behind us here? We've got uh, Wilhelm and uh, Miller versus uh, uh, Jennifer LaCour and Randy. Yeah. Yep. Randy Coleman. Randy Coleman. Yes. Traveling Coleman. <laughs> uh, coordinator of referees Byron Fresso uh, is in the uh, house here. And uh, Byron, it's been a great day. You've had a lot of volunteer uh, refs this week that have helped make this tournament go. And, of course, you give a lot of your time and energy for all these tournaments all over the country. I see you at everything. Uh, talk about how it's been going here at the Atlanta South Championships at Lake Wynwood Country Club. Well, you know, this year is the first time we try to get referees for every pro match, uh, and in doing so, I think it is really uh, the players appreciate that. Uh, that yes, we, we appreciate very the much. Uh, one of the things as an official, I like to think of it as taking away the concern of keeping the score uh, and let the players focus on what they do best, that is play. And hopefully they have you know, realized that this weekend it's been a great opportunity for them to showcase their talent and, and just play their game. Um, yep. The volunteers, I can't speak uh, enough words about them. They have been tremendous. Even though we didn't have a full complement that has been here, has been helpful to us. And um, yeah, I'm well, sure all the players have had a good experience. From the players' perspective, we all appreciate and thank you and your team of referees for what you guys do and bring to the table because you make it so much more enjoyable for all of us. Thank you very much. All right, uh, all players now are on hand here for this semi-final match. Again, it's Hardeen and Yates taking on Johns and McGrath. We have three South Florida residents and uh, Christine McGrath, who is from uh, Southern California. And, you know, Altaf, as you think, as you look at this matchup with Christine and Ben taking on Kyle and Simone, what are your, you know, two or three keys as you see it to this matchup? Well, you just saw that in the first, first ball right there. You know, Ben's got to start to use his reach and start to get that ball in the middle. Look at Ben right there. Oh, 
that sailed in. I think Ben was surprised that Christine didn't hit it. Oh, what tremendous defense. This is what you're going to see a lot in this match, folks. These players are all tremendous defenders. For To win a point, you're going to have to win the point two or three times. Two or three times, and especially, I think the key to this is going to be Simone defending Ben. I mean, if you watch the U.S. Open, anybody that watches the U.S. Open mixed finals will know that she did such an incredible job of defending Matt Wright. And that's what it's going to come down to, because Ben's going to go hard at her. And there she goes. Yep. Reset and set right back up. I'm going to predict as this match progresses, I'm going to predict that Ben Johns gets even more aggressive, takes more of the court, and really tries to swoop in with that forehand. Because I don't think Kyle and Simone are going to go behind Ben that much. Ben might be the best player that we have in the country of going backhand around the post. He bowls his wrist, and he gets incredible spin to bring the ball back into the court so i don't i don't see them burning him going behind him so right now you can tell he's letting you know christine handle that side because christine's a phenomenal cross-court backhand dinker one of the best we have in the country and i think she can hang with simone in this kind of game and i think what you're going to see is john's try to get in insert himself in the point a lot more than Yates will and I think that could be a huge key to watch as this match progresses and might tip the favor uh, of Christine and Ben going into this match I'd say Kyle and Simone are the favorite I would think so too I think this match is going to come down to it's going to come down to Ben versus Simone you know ordinarily you look at a mixed match and you think it's going to be the two gals playing each other deking cross court but I really think it's going to be Ben attacking Simone and if she mm -hmm. lock and reset mm -hmm. And both these women have unbelievable two-handed uh, backhands that generate an incredible amount of pace, but they're also extremely accurate with that shot, both Simone and uh, Christine. And Christine, they, while we've been watching this match, Matt and Lucy have pulled off to an 8-0 lead in game one. Yeah, they're certainly the heavy favorite in that match. There's, there's the example of the two-handed backhands we were just talking about. And there's the example, right on cue. I think they're listening to us, Altaf. Right on cue. Sometimes it just wor life works that way, Altaf. What do you think is gonna be the lottery numbers for tonight? That's trouble. Any of these players, if you float a ball, even a half a ball too high to a forehand, and you are gonna pay a steep price. Two, two, one. Simone serving to Christine. There's a rare uh, net unforced error by Jardine. Two, two, two. Simone is so tough. When she brings that two-handed backhand across her body and pulls it to Ben's backhand, that's a tough shot to read, and she brings so much pace on it. You can see Ben always leaning to his right, trying to capture some of these forehands, and Simone gets such good angles on it, Ben can't get to the ball. Look at the patience and discipline these players have. That ball did not bounce. That ball did not bounce. Ben uh, saying that the ball might be cracked and that affected his shot. Or there's a soft spot on the ball, but they're gonna continue to use the ball and that, that is gonna be a point. Folks, just so you know, if you determine that the ball was cracked and it affected your shot, you can appeal to the ref saying that ball affected my shot and get a new ball and replay the point. As long as all four players agree that the ball there's Ben taking over. Yep. And I think he's going to have to do that for this match to really be uh, competitive. And I think he will. Ben likes to play that way. He likes to be active. Dave, do you get the feeling like this match being three out of five, that the players are 
I was just holding a little bit extra in their tank right now. Yes. As opposed to going. Yep. Because you played a, a, a five setter yesterday. It's and, a, you know, it's a mentally. It's a very good point. In fact, Kyle and I, before the first game, said, uh, it, it's. We emphasize in a three out of five match, we don't need to come out of the gates with 150% of our energy. Let's work our way into the match. Let's read the match, how it goes. And we ended up losing the first game, and it really didn't matter that much. You know, we turned it up at the end. So I think these players are thinking this is going to be a long, long road. Uh, not only is the semifinal match the best three out of five sets, but the gold medal match will be as well. Yeah, you know Players pre-game, pre-match, with about a half hour getting ready, that they felt like a whole nother tournament had just started. You know, everybody's yes. gone, and, and we're gonna have to play two big five setter matches. Absolutely. To get out of here. Absolutely. Along with pro pickleball and IT director Carl Schmidt, this is Altoff Merchant, along with Dave Weinbach, bringing you this live action here in Alpharetta, Georgia, at beautiful Lake Windward country club here at the Atlanta South Championships and there's an example of Simone's dink was about a half a ball too high and that allowed McGrath to come in and attack that forehand really like the way McGrath just hugging that kitchen line look at her she was just right there there's Ben leaning in if you were coaching Christine and Ben and you were playing in this type of matchup against Simone and Kyle, uh, would you have any input as to how you would attack them or what strategy you would have? Because to me, Simone and Kyle really don't have any weaknesses in their game. They don't. I would, I think I would have, I, I'd focus on two things. I think, Christine, you just have to stay patient and be in the point because eventually there was going to be a, a dink that's going to pop up and then you just have to be ready. That right there, you have to be ready. And that's on. The, Simone likes to go behind the guy occasionally. Ben's going to be a tough. That's a tough strategy against Ben. It's worked. It works against a lot of other guys, but it's it's going to be interesting to see if it's going to work against Ben. But Ben's going to have one or two chances to take this match over, and when he gets those chances, he's going to have to do yep. it. Yep. Remember, we're just in game one, game one in the best three out of five, and I think as I predicted, I think as this match progresses. Look for Johns to be more aggressive and poach more and really lean in like that to take the forehands. Again, Ben, right on cue. Dave, uh, Matt and Lucy, just to update our viewers, Matt and Lucy won the first game 11 0 when they were starting their second game. Yeah, you know, Matt and Lucy are just so tough and they put so much pressure on you. You got to really keep the ball down against Matt and Lucy, or you're going to pay a steep price. Great defense there by Kyle to reset and get back in the point. You know, Lucy's uh, improved her game so much in the last six to nine months. Now there's really no way to attack her. She, her dinking, her third shots have gotten so much better that it's very, very difficult to attack her. Uh, and I think she is one of the top two women's players that we have in the whole game right now. I agree totally. Look at Ben. Look at Ben. Look at Ben. Yep. Yep. And, and that's what you're gonna. That's what you're gonna see more of. We we have a, another oh. very special guest here, f directly from Nashville, Tennessee. It's Stephanie Schaus Lane. Steph, thanks for joining us. We were trying to find you uh, earlier. Lee. She's yeah. one match away from making it to the bronze. Oh, fantastic. Well, Stephanie, you had an incredible day today. Had oh, yeah, you were playing with Brian Pointer yeah. from Evansville, Indiana. We, we got what I call the milkshake. We got fourth place. We <laughs> got the milkshake. But that's not bad for your first time playing together as a team. You guys. Thank you. Well, it's been a great day of great mixed day. pro doubles. Um, Catch me up to speed here. We, ha we are down to the semifinal matches here in mixed pro doubles. Uh, Matt and Lucy are having their way with Catherine and Joey on one court. And we are working on the match with Simone and Kyle taking on Ben and Christine. And Kyle and Simone took an early lead. Altoff, do you have a score update or uh, could you not hear it? I think ben, okay. Ben and Christine are After this point, we'll get a scoring, we'll get a scoring update. Look at the backhand. 
these players have played so much together that nothing's going to surprise another player from what another player does. They've played so many rec games and tournament matches together. If this is if this were an exhibition, the guy would put his paddle down and spin around. You know, he'd get tired of waiting and it's yeah. the real deal. And there's an example of Ben committing to the middle with his forehand because right. Simone hit the previous 34 shots cross court and he kind of fell asleep. And, and Simone, as Altaf has pointed out, Simone loves to go behind the guy. Yeah. As we just saw again. You have to keep those guys honest in these days, as you well know. Yep. 4 4 2, Dave. Okay. Thanks, Altaf. 4 4 2, Yates serving to Johns. And here's what really we're going to see a ton of in this match <laughs> over the next three to five sets. A lot of cross-court uh, dinking, I think, with the two ladies. Oh, and that just clips the net and sails wide. That would have been a nice, deep winner down the middle, I think, if it didn't hit the net. Dave, you have to believe so far Christine has played to the point. She is, she is executing her game plan to perfection so far. That was an that was probably the first dink that she left up high. Common mistake that Kyle makes. Yates is going to miss that one out of 500 times. Although we missed one yesterday. <laughs> but who's counting? But who's counting? These nets are very nice, aren't they, instead of the timber? <laughs> oh, Steph, we talked about that earlier talked today. Right. How, uh, you know, we're seeing so many net courts, uh, especially on the temporary nets. So here at, at Lake Alf. Uh, Lake Windward Country Club, we have four permanent courts. And it's just such a beautiful setting to play pickleball. We're surrounded by trees. Not a lot of shade on the court, but off the court, the fans are the fans are really enjoyed this, this week here and having all the pros in town and Oh, he was actually trying to hit her with that shot. He was he was not trying to put that ball in the court. He was trying to get her left shoulder. Which is not a bad play in pickleball. No, it's it's not a personal thing, Steph. It's part of the game. I mean, sure. they're trying to win. It's not something that players do a lot of, but you got to keep people honest. That's right. If they've got that paddle in red position on one side of the body, you've got to make yep. them pay for that. But in that case, Simone saw that coming from a mile ahead of time. She was ducking. He'll catch up to it. Oh, she'll get there. Oh. What a point. I'd say that's the point of the match so far. By far, and I was just amazed at how fast Kyle caught up to the Christine backhand. Once again, Simone gets the guy leaning one way. Uh, because of the heat this week, we've been allowing the players to have what we call hydration timeouts. So this is not an official timeout. This is just a hydration uh, timeout. You know, uh, 80 five degrees under our tent, but on the court right now that I'm standing, it feels like a hundred. And these players have been out here since 7 a.m. Along with Stephanie Shouslane, an Altaf merchant from Mumbai, India. Uh, and thank you to Pro Pickleball and our IT director, Carl Schmidt. We're bringing you a lot of live action here. You look like a pie to put that headset on top of that. <laughs> I like wow. to fly with my, my pilot, but you're not going to find <laughs> me behind the controls in control. There's way too many things going on in an airplane to keep track of. As Altaf has said, Christine really holding her own in this match with Simone to date so far here in game one of the semifinals of the mixed pro doubles. Oh, good hands, Kyle, on that first one. He read that misdirection pretty well coming off of McGrath's paddle. Yeah, that's the first time she's fed it up all match. Otherwise, she's just stayed in game plan of going cross court to Simone. So for those that don't understand why we would have the girls dinking, Dave, tell, tell us what the guys are looking for in those scenarios. When the, girl, when the girls are drinking forever cross court, what they're really trying to focus on is hitting the ball in the kitchen and making your dink unattackable. Make your opponent have to lift that ball. What the guys are trying to do 
is lean in and try to capture with their forehand some of those balls that might float a little bit too high or maybe a little bit too much down the middle. And that's why Kyle and Ben are constantly leaning to the right, waiting for a, a chance, an opportunity to attack. And Altaf and I were talking about this before the match. We thought one of the real keys to this match, Steph, was which of the guys could insert himself more into the match and try to take over and take control. And that's where I personally think that Ben will do that as this match progresses. Yeah. And I think he's going to have to for them to make this match competitive. Because sure. remember, this is three out of five sets, and we're only in game one. So this is really going to be a marathon. And then the girls will try to keep, keep the guys honest and keep the guys on their side. Yes. Go behind them. Yep, yep, exactly. Well, it's seven four. Kyle and Simone are up seven four. And both of these ladies, I may, I must say, are two of the best at going behind the guy. These these two women are phenomenal at going behind the guy and misdirecting shots. What what'd you see there, Alta? I just well, Davis, what you've been telling us all along, you can't hit an attackable. Dink, I thought he left that float a little too high, and Kyle was ready. That's one of the things you're going to see with the top top guys is they just need one chance. They don't go to sleep. They don't go to sleep. <laughs> they're always awake. They're always ready to go, and you give them that one chance, yeah, half an inch, yeah. and they're going to pounce on it. Steph, you've played a lot against Simone uh, and Christine, both rec games and in, in tournaments. How would you compare their games and their styles? Christine loves the dink cross court. Yep, I, I would agree. I think Christine McGrath is one of the best forehand cross-court dinkers we have in the in the women's game. Yeah, we talked earlier about how both these women have <laughs> incredible two-handed backhands, not just the pace of the ball, but the accuracy and the consistency. I tell you what, Altaf, there's not a lot of freebies in this match. You gotta earn it, baby. You, gotta earn it. you can feel Simone down the line coming. Oh, Ben anticipated it really well. Oh, and then he missed the easy forehand. Not the hard one, missed the easy one. That's, that's what happened. I think Ben knew Simone was gonna go around the post before Simone knew she was gonna go around the post. He was sitting there waiting on his backhand. Again, these players have played a lot of pickleball together, both rec games and tournaments over the years and they know each other's tendencies. Wow. Right at the feet of ben. Kyle knew that Ben ground. would be leaning to his right to cover the middle and he went behind him and got the ball down as I you said. Say, if it's on the ground, they can't hurt you with that. But when you get it in the air, it's what up? What yeah. Up? yeah. Those are all over the court. Eight five one timeout. Eight five one on a timeout. So uh Thanks to Pro Pickleball, along with Altoff Merchant and Stephanie Lane, this is Dave Weinbach bringing you this live action from beautiful Lake Windward Country Club. Uh, right next to us, some of you are probably watching live. Lucy Kovalanda and Matt Wright and Joey. And uh, as we said, Matt and Lucy uh, easily won game one. 6-8-2 in game two, so it's a competitive game two. Just stand it back up a little bit here. Sounds like you guys got a more competitive game two going on over here in this match. Absolutely. How's it going over there? Uh, this is a really good match over here. There's no freebies. I mean, you got to earn every point. Yeah, and it's the semifinals, baby. Eight, five, two here in game one. Remember folks, this is a best three out of five. This is not two out of three to 11, it's three out of five. So these players are just getting comfortable and nestled in and they know this is gonna be a marathon. Wow, that might have been the first 
Zinc mist by Christine. Yeah, she doesn't miss too many of those forehand cross court dinks. Oh, it was there, and he went for too much of an angle. You know, I, I think for home players, like guys, home players look at a, a mistake like that, and they feel like that's an unforced error. But I think when you're playing a person like Kyle and Simone or Matt and Dave, you know, they force you to make these errors because when you know you have to get up with the perfect shot, yes. Yeah, yeah, a little, uh, looks like a little frustration there uh, at the end of that game uh, from Johns. He's having trouble predicting where that ball is going to go. Uh, but to me, the bigger issue is uh, Kyle and Simone are getting some attackable balls. And as I often say, and you've heard me say many times, when you do that, they have too many options, too many options. And which creates issues. <laughs> We, t we talked about this in our match preview, is that Kyle tends to let Simone play her side much more than Ben lets Christine play her side. Not that he's not confident in Christine, but he is just a more aggressive uh, mixed doubles player, and I expect him to be more aggressive as this match progresses. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like uh, Kyle right now is very happy to come out of game one and still have a full tank of gas, and he's just ready. Yeah, well, yeah. We just saw that Matt and Lucy just pulled off game number two. Game two, so one more game, one and then they're in the then. gold medal match. And this is huge. If they can win in three, in, in three straight games, that's huge because although it's beautiful in Atlanta, but it's hot. And they can go in there, get in the shade, rehydrate, relax. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You know they're calling for a five-set match over here. <laughs> yep, yep. So uh, the players are getting settled in here, and we are about to start game Two, try to get the name of our referee. We always like to give a shout out to the referees here who just give an immense amount of their time and effort and not to mention cost to get to these uh, tournaments. It's uh, people don't understand how much human effort it takes. It's run a match. And these guys are these guys are on their feet more than the players are. I mean, they get out of one match and they go to the next one right away. Yep. That's Peter from Nashville, Tennessee. Peter, yep. Okay, McGrath serving to Jardin. And we're already seeing it. Look look at look at Ben. Side out, zero zero one. Kyle got the ball he wanted, and I think he the ball just hung in the air there. I think the winner had a little bit, to, a little bit to do with it. That ball just did not look to Kyle. I have seen in the past when he makes errors like that, it motivates him, and uh, he he can turn it up into another notch. I would say that that ball was borderline attackable. She's certainly capable of rolling it with her top spin forehand, but that time she didn't give enough margin for air over the net. Dave, what are your thoughts where, you know, I look at that point and I think you're playing Christine who's, who's not gonna speed it up on you. So when you feel that the balls are just borderline attackable, you know, wouldn't you better be better off just letting it bounce and just wait for that ball that you think I got, I'm going to go for this. this is so if, if I feel like I can attack opponent on their backhand or forehand side, uh, I'll speed that ball up. But in the case of when you play against these players that are not very attackable, you know, they have such no weaknesses like that, I tend to stay patient and wait for a better ball to attack. We can see already, look look where Ben is standing in game two versus game one. Game one yep. We're already seeing the trend that we talked about. And there's Kyle. Well, McGrath just didn't do anything with that ball. 
you know, if Kyle wouldn't have done that, Simone would have. But you have to remember, McGrath with that two-handed backhand, she wins that point 99% of the time. It's only when she plays the Benz, the Mads, the Daves of the world that she sees a comeback. When ladies double tuple, she wins that point. Simone yep. has to get back to that's a That's a good, good point. Simone has got to get back to keeping Ben honest. You think she should go behind him more? She, she needs to go back. That's I think in her mind, she just believes that she is going to be more consistent than McGrath. I think she believes that McGrath's going to make an error before she does. Oh, there's another backhand that usually that's Yates' best shot. Is he loves to slap that backhand and roll it with topspin. And that's two that he missed. That, uh, McGrath actually took a Simone dink in the air and placed it down the line. Uh, down the middle, I mean. Yes. She, she, started, she created that point. Dave, just like we talked about, you can feel the energy level. They've, they've gone from 95% now to about 100. And I think as this match progresses, they'll hit 125, 150. Yes. What did you see there, Altaf? Once again, I think it's... Uh, Christine is doing a very, very good job of pushing Simone back on the, on the dink and that's letting Ben step in and insert himself in the point. Once again, incredible backhand earning. Oh, there's a ball on the coat here. Can read oh, the where did that come from? Just gonna do a quick, a quick sound check, a quick sound check here. Are we good, Carl? Okay. Altoff's gonna stand to my left, so he's closer to the microphone. Yeah, because we only have uh, one headset here, and our our IT director has been tirelessly working. We've got about 50 wires going on here, at least six cameras, 18 microphones. So what's happening here is the ball came from the other coach, and so I think Ben stopped the point. Wanted to replay it. Um, Kyle and Simone had definitely set up the point, and they were they had gone from creative to starting to take over the point, and they felt like they had already won the point. Um, but Ben had Ben had pulled away, and so the, the rule is you have to play the point over because Ben did did, did put his hand up. Zero two two. Great drop. And there's Yates initiating. We call that initiating. I think he really would like to be more involved. It's, it's a little bit frustrating sometimes in mixed doubles when you know you're getting one shot out of every 50 that are hit. It's hard to keep your rhythm. What do you do as a player to try to? I know you play a lot of mixed doubles with your wife, and uh, you know what do you try to do as a player uh, where you're just not getting many balls and it's hard to get into a rhythm? It's really really hard to stay to stay focused. What I really like to do is. Um, since I'm left-handed, you know, Beth and I, we stack a lot. And so I really try to get involved in the third shot, just like you do, Dave. I, I feel like if I can hit that third shot, I can start to get more into the point. And sometimes I'm running all the way over to get that third shot. Yep, that's one way to insert yourself into it. I play a lot of mixed doubles with Cassandra Gerke, and that's what we do. Is she serves and takes a step over to the corner, and I try to take all the thirds that I can reach. Look, look, look what, look what Ben's going to try to do here. Oh, that ball was going out. Oh, what a get by Simone. The ball was two feet behind her body. Yeah. 
This is some fantastic mixed doubles that we're getting treated to today. This is some high quality thinking. There she goes, keeping Ben on. Yep. These are all unattackable balls. Folks that are watching at home, if you're wondering why people aren't attacking those shots, is that all of those dinks were unattackable. And as I say in my clinics, that's how you evaluate if a dink is successful, is if it was unattackable. Yeah, yeah. Another unforced error. Uh, this is Dave the Badger Weinbach, along with Altoff Merchant and Pro Pickleball, bringing you this live action. Folks, please share this content. Share, 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 and like, like, like. Every time you do, you will be eligible for a $100 gift certificate from Total Pickleball. So uh, don't be shy. Share, share, share. And like. Oh, it came over. Oh, what a get. There's an example of Ben coming over. I mean, he was on maximum stretch for that forehand coming over. Less people watching than in the first round. But you, there's just so many members enjoying this beautiful pickleball. Whoa. Foul, foul ball. <coughs> I think he's, did he say 2 3 2? We'll try to keep our viewers updated on the score. Oh, I thought Kyle could have done a lot more with that forehand. He got a high forehand and didn't do anything with the ball. I thought that ball was over. 3-3-2. Three, three, well, McGrath choosing to drive that two-handed backhand. Oh, an unforced error. Um, we call that a freebie. When you miss a return of serve, that's a point every time. Sorry. Oh, it just clips the net. Let's see if Simone can get back to the kitchen line. Dave, I still remember playing you, playing with you the first time. Right before we got on court, you said I'm allowed to miss one return the entire day. And I think it was 2-3 when I missed my first return. And I thought, wow, <laughs> this is the first match, 2-3. I got a long way to go. But that was great advice. I have been known to say to my partners before a tournament starts, I say out of the 10 matches that we're going to have to play today to win the gold medal, we're each allowed to miss one serve. And how many returns are we allowed to miss? Zero. Zippo, because every time you do, it is a... Point. Point. Oh, she went behind him. Oh. I still feel like that's the play. She's got to have to keep Ben on. Honest. Yep. But she's got to pick her chances when to do that. Because if Ben's sitting on his backhand, he has the most powerful backhand. He and he and Matt. I like the move there, though, by Johns. I think he has to do that. And I would say eight out of ten times, he's going to execute that shot. And he is the guy that won the singles in the group prize. So make him, make him move and make that shot. Uh, I think
think this is a hydration break here. Hydration break, yes. Yeah, so this gives us a chance to catch up on the other semifinal match over uh, here with Parento and Farias taking on Wright and Kobolanda. I think that this is game game three. This is game uh, three, you guys. This is game three. We have 5-3-2. Uh, Lucy and Matt won the first two games pretty easily. Um, Catherine and Joy trying to find a rhythm here. Thank you for that update. Absolutely. Okay, back to uh, our match on hand over here, Altaf. Here we're back to our cross court dink fest with the ladies. Let's see who's going to hit the attack, the first attackable ball. Oh, I thought there was one there that McGrath passed on. Uh, and then she uh, dinks it right into the bottom of the net. Looked to me like she took her eye off the ball there and mishit it off the edge of the paddle. And of course, in pickleball, if you don't hit the center of the paddle, you get an entirely different experience than when you hit the middle of the paddle. Yeah, nice backhand by Yates. That's what we're used to seeing with his backhand. Those two that he missed earlier are extremely uncharacteristic for him to miss a backhand. <laughs> but like you say, Dave, we're not counting, right? But who's counting, baby? Uh, see, that's a, that's an example of Ben trying to attack an unattackable ball. I mean, that ball. I feel like at that stage right there. Ben, looks like Johns is just pressing a little bit right now. Seven, you know, lost game one, down 7-3 here. This format of three out of five games might end up really benefiting Ben and Christine if they can somehow turn the momentum around. They have plenty of time. Plenty of time to, to recover here. They got to win... Three games. Dave, as a player, when you're playing a three out of five and you have your, your next round match or you're playing a three out of five behind you, do you do you kind of, kind of keeping an eye on seeing what's going on there? Are they working as hard? And what's their score? Or are you just 100% focused on your match and taking care of your business? You're focused on you and your business and your partner and your team. He's going to get this. Oh, he got there in plenty of time. He just, just a little bit long. I would say between Yates and Cardine, you have two of the best defenders in the game, if not the two best in the entire game. Simone, to me, is for sure the best defender on the women's side. I mean, she gets balls back that you just cannot believe come back, and she gets them back in the kitchen. Yep. It's uncanny. I saw that ball just long. Yep, I think Kyle and Simone both called it long at the same time, and Ben didn't argue. That's an issue. That ball was uh, uh, half a foot too high. I think um, anybody else that she's playing against, she goes running around the post. She just didn't feel comfortable going for that. That's a rare uh, dink in the net. Four, seven, one. Here in game two 
of the semifinals at the Atlantic South Tournaments. Oh, good recovery by Christine there off that net court. And here's Ben taking over. See, McGrath actually had a foot off the court there. I really love the way um, Christine is playing. She's just sticking to her game plan, thinking, and then she's giving Ben room because sometimes you, 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 you've played before days where your partner has not, not moved out of the way and given you that room. She's doing a great job of giving space to Ben. She got an attackable ball there. Yates was thinking she was going down the line. Simone was thinking she was going cross court, and she split split him right down the middle. Like somebody told me. Somebody asked me one time, who's got center field? <laughs> <laughs> oh, great get. And this is this is what we expected for most of this match would would be like this and and there's there's Ben coming over and I think he's gonna stay over there. Let's see if Simone tries to go behind him. Yates goes to his backhand. Simone steps way back off the kitchen line there. <laughs> Who's gonna blink first here? What a rally. Oh, look at the, def oh, he was there. Terrific defense and then Yates frames one at the end off the edge of his paddle. the middle of game two, Altaf. What have you seen in terms of any strategy changes that Christine and Ben have made since the first game loss, if any? I think Ben has tried to be a little more, Ben has tried to be a little more aggressive, for sure, but I just really like the way Christine has stayed in the game, and you know, she's had two or three chances, and she's taken them. I mean, you're yeah. between Simone and Kyle, you're not gonna get too many chances, and I think she's 100% on the chances she's got, and that's huge. I mean, that's been the difference so far. Yeah, yeah. Just a glorious day here at Lake Windward Country Club. I mean, this tournament ha is so much more improved from last year. The the depth of the field and the quality of the field. And, of course, Pro Pickleball bringing you all this live streaming action. Our IT director, Carl, has been working tirelessly. I think the guy has slept four hours in the, la in the last three days, setting everything up, taking it down at night. He's got... 10 different cameras going, eight microphones, 56 different wires, all to bring you this great content. So please share, 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 and like so more people can watch these great matches. And every time you share or like, you will be put into a raffle for a $100 gift certificate from Total Pickleball. So we'll keep you up to date on that one. Oh, good depth by Ben. That's out. Oh, he hit it. Let's see if Kyle gets back in. Oh, see, what I teach is once you hit a good drop, you got to close to the kitchen line. And now they can't get in. Oh, there's an example of the terrific defense we talked about. In our keys to the match, we had Simone's defense. We had Simone keeping Ben honest. We had Ben inserting himself, hitting that big backhand. We saw all of that in one point. I thought it would cost them the not getting to the kitchen line after Kyle hit that great drop. You know, I teach people, once you are playing defense like that, once you hit a good drop shot, you got to get to the kitchen line. Oh, it was out, but Kyle couldn't resist the high forehand. And can you blame him all tough? Look at the defense. It's 
seems like every time Ben hits a hard one, he takes another half a step to his right. Do you notice that? Because he senses a defensive ball coming back, which gives him more time to react to the next ball. So no matter where it comes back, he's going to be able to capture it. Oh, I thought she might go around the post there. Oh. Kyle loves to go cross court with that backhand dink. He's so good at that shot. I saw it yesterday about 14,500 times. I think he missed two dinks the entire day out of about 14,000. Such a consistent player and such a gritty competitor. There's a reason he's the four-time U.S. Open champion. And I, I just, I just really believe that Simone thinks in her mind that she is going to win, you know, a high percentage of those battles that she gets in with McGrath on those cross-court dink fest. I don't know if this is, is this a hydration nope, break. No. Nope. Yep, it's an it's an actual it's an actual timeout. Uh, let's step on the court, Altoff, and see if we can get a quick update here on the Kovalanda Wright Farius Parento match. Let's get a score here. 10-10-1 here in game three, right? Kovalonda taking game one and game two. Farias and Prento trying to extend this match. Remember, folks, the, this is a best three out of five sets. Unlike a traditional pickleball tournament where we get two out of three, the organizers and the tournament directors, uh, Chad and Chris, decided that they were going to make this a very unique format and that once we got to the top four teams, we were going to go right to uh, the uh, best three out of five. Okay, we're going to we're bringing back. We got a timeout on that match. Timeout at 10-10 in the third game in the Farias Kovalanda match. And uh, Simone serving to Ben John. All right, uh, we just saw Yates and Hardin close out game two. So Yates and Hardin close out game two. Uh, time is just getting back in at 10. Various Parento versus uh, Lucy and Matt match here. Lucy and Matt have the serve back trying to close out the match. We're going to try to keep you up to date, folks, on all this live action. The first game... Court. Uh, what did it feel like on the on the court? Well, yeah, I mean, what is it like, 90 degrees out maybe? It feels like it in the shade. On the court, it's just probably 10 to 15 degrees hotter. I mean, it's just as hot as it was yesterday. Doubles to watch. Right now we try to keep it going. You know, we're already up two sets. We don't want to let slip away. We got to try to close it out here. Yep, and it looks like Matt and Lucy are just about to close out 
game three here. So if indeed you can capture this semifinal match, I think you'll be playing uh, Lucy and Matt in the final. So uh, finish it out, get a break, uh, stay hydrated. We'll see you soon. Camera uh, to the match. Matt and Lucy serving at 11-10-2, match point. Oh, I thought that ball was wide. I thought that ball was wide, but the players did not call it, and they played. Myth hit the gearbox paddle of Joey and Catherine have they've had a terrific day all doing uh, uh, tandem. They're going to keep you. Yeah, they're yeah. Overpower you, but they're going to create openings and they're going to keep you off balance all day long. We're going to try to get off the court here as these players get ready for game three on this court. And uh, as Matt and Lucy try to close out. Uh, let's do a quick sound check, Carl. Are we uh, are we okay on the uh, yeah. on the sound? Okay. We are about to start game three. Game three starting here. Uh, Hardin and Yates taking both games one and game two. 